Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. On uh, Seton's Clutch, Seton's Clutch, Sentence. With Mites as always in the Cybern. And Kois Kicks. Playing UEF. I think he always plays UEF. I think, anyway, we shall. Well, and let me know if he doesn't. But I think he does. So. Might's going first land. Pigeon. Oh. Koiskix, I think, is already making a mistake here. So. The team game version, you do uh, want to build a factory and then immediately go to mid. But. Uh, you don't really want to do that in. In 1v1, in my opinion. But Koiskix is doing it, so he's going to get more of the mid mass. But uh, his base is going to be a lot smaller because if. This is basically two engineers of build power walking away from the base, not building anything after the first factory. So you can see, score wise, certainly Mites is already ahead. He's going to have factories faster, he's going to have more power. And so he's going to have more he's going to be more able to use this reclaim and when he gets to mid there is still going to be reclaim here to be got but we shall see what happens uh we have a mantis we have a couple scouts so he's going to spot this acu pretty quick So you can see only a couple of pigeons and then another factory. He's has he's very very low on power. Hmm. And there's a scout going past, gets taken out. The other one, it's not spotted. The ACU is spotted, so Mites is still building. He's he's gonna leave after he builds that air factory. You can see power wise, Mites has uh, 120. Koiskix only on 60. He's gonna get this Hydra pretty quick. That's nice. So he has a not a not a not a bad build considering where his ACU is going. And you can see, yes, yeah, straight onto another factory. Also making a mechs upgrade and just gonna reclaim as much as he can. He shouldn't even really worry about overflowing. Just uh, take as much of it, even if you overflow, you're denying it to your opponent. So, this is one of those cases where overflowing is not too bad. And it's sort of a thing in subcom. There's always a situation where the rule is broken. Basically, always. Any rule you can think of in subcom, there's some exception to it. So you always have to be aware and now we can see Koiskix actually has higher score. He has a lot more reclaim obviously. He should still be reclaiming instead of shooting some tanks. I think he should definitely be just grabbing reclaim. Gonna have a full mass but he needs uh, a lot more power certainly. He's using the trees quite well to uh, get some more power into his economy and he's almost equal on pigeons now one thing he is behind on oh we have a bomber and what's it attacking it's a couple of pigeons here that's not a good targeting oh accidental dodge by this engineer not gonna dodge this time and now we have an AA and a an inti Oh, just one kill. So, one thing he's quite slow on. Ooh, that's a nice factory here, but uh, he's quite slow on his uh, expansion. You can see Mites already has moved to this side, and now Mites' commander is in mid. I think Koiskix could have reclaimed more by now, but uh, he looks okay, e quite even in terms of tanks. He has his AC there. And this scout, I mean, Mites actually just broke. Koiskix trees in a 1v1 on sentence. That's just dastardly play. Might's now getting a PD. 
one of the wonderful things about Cybern is you can just start a PD and then have the Mantis finish it. It's actually, it's really good to be able to uh, rush PDs quickly, even if you just have a T1 commander, because you have a whole army of uh, builders. They only have one build power, but you have 20 Mantis. That's uh, <clears throat> 20 build power. Quick maths. 20 build powers, 4 engineers. So you're gonna build that PD pretty quick. We have. Do we have any economy? We don't. So Koiskik's going for those T2 mechs. He has quite a few on the way. One finished, three on the way. Still, expansion is slow. He's gonna have to make a an air factory of a P, uh, bomber idle in the base. Definitely want to try use bombers here to uh, attack. These lonely engineers, like this guy. And also, this guy up here. Very, very vulnerable. Even this guy here. You can see, the expansion, quite a lot slower. you got to walk engineers across this map. You can't just rely on drops. It takes too much APM, and also, it's uh, slower to wait for your transports, because you can't drop every mechs. Only fit six engineers on a transport, so you're going to want to drop the main locations, but you can't drop all of all of these. Quite kicks. Trying to make use of the trees. Some of these aren't broken. Some of them are. He's still breaking some with his uh, expansion, but uh, you know, it's okay. And getting some mass might start really fighting for a lot of this this reclaim. I mean, he's. Koiskix is just being allowed to get this this reclaim for free, and he has so much more reclaim now. 9.7, 9.8 thousand to 2.8. So Koiskix should be feeling pretty good. He just needs to expand. Expand it. Build a transport. He is making a lot of economy, which I like. And the tank numbers, pretty similar, nothing scary. Mites does love his spam. He loves his spam and then skipping T2. He also does love the gun upgrade, and that's what he's going for right now. So, will Koiskik see that? That was a scout, so he should have actually seen it, I think. I think he would have been able to. Oh, we have a bomber with a lazy attack move. But there's two NTs already after him, and he gets taken out. T2 started and instantly cancelled. Mites wants to stop that from happening. And this gun is almost done. So he may be forced to cancel it again. It's often a good idea to go into the water when you're trying to make these upgrades. Okay, we have a transport. He's going to throw a factory up, and then he's probably, he's hopefully going to. Redrop. He has dropped the back. It looks like. Yeah, you got to be careful about these attack moves, followed by things you want to build. I don't usually end well. Ten minutes later, you're still on the attack move order, and now I feel like Koiskix is gonna have to stop this upgrade. It's got about 40 or 50 seconds left on it. I think 40 seconds. And he has no assist on it, and there's a gun commander coming after him, and pretty even tanks, maybe slightly less tanks. Ooh, nice overcharge. I need to turn down the... After this battle, we'll turn down the sounds, they're too loud. And Koiske is getting very low, he needs to retreat to the water. He has some pillars coming, but they're surely just going to be overcharged, or even... Killed by all these Medusa. Uh, just turn that down slightly so I can hear myself. So Kois kicks now very low and Mites may be looking to make a push. We'll have to see some PDs. Oh, there are some PDs queued up already. They're quite far back to give him plenty of time to uh, get them up. 
But uh, Might's, Might's army doesn't look too scary. It's mostly just about this commander. So with the T2PDs, he can stop this. There's quite a few pillars out. Might be wise to uh, just hold off. Build up a nice amount of pillars. Ooh, we have so much mass. So much mass. So some trouble scaling his build power. We also have no navy. Which... The longer the game goes on, the more dangerous it is, especially, uh, certainly at 12 minutes, I would expect some navy, because you can just have frigates around, and that makes it a lot more difficult to actually get into the water. So, Mites expanded better, actually has all of his mexes now, except his island, if you can call this his island, I suppose, uh, guess this is his. Slightly closer than this. And, uh, see, Koi's kick still. I guess these guys are on the attack move before they build the mexes. Quite a lot of T2 mass extractors. And this AC retreats to the beach. And he's gonna come back here. Might's not interested in pushing. He got a massive reclaim field. Basically, the entire T1 army of both players at the time just got wiped here in mid. And Mites has taken all the mass, so he's actually going to catch up and reclaim. And it's a big deal, he's going to use this mass to make T3 land. We're at almost 14 minutes, we have a tiny drop here. And that's not going to be very successful, it's extremely late to make a proxy. If you want to make a proxy, you got to do it a lot sooner. There is a radar right here, he also hasn't scouted here, so he doesn't know what's around. If he had, say, spotted a, a radar and then sniped it and then went for that, then that would be good. Have a big power stall. Needs to uh, delay this T2. He has it paused and uh, C2P gen is going to help him a lot. And he has managed to spend his mass. I'm guessing he clicked upgrade on many, many mass extractors. That's what I would that's what I would guess, and I do see some upgrading now. Not enough radar coverage. Oh yeah, T2 Max over here, quite vulnerable. So yeah, he has been upgrading a lot to uh, get rid of his mass. The problem is he's still needs to increase his production a lot to make use of all the mass once he once he gets it now kind of made the problem bigger for himself. Might's trying to steal the island, he's throwing up a PD, that's why you always need some units on the island, some IRTs, tanks, to stop this from happening. This PD is going to kill the factory, and Might's going to take the island, that's a pretty nice move. He has T2 transport, T2 air, and yeah, this proxy never, never got off the ground. T2 gunship's quite powerful, if you can maintain air control, you can... Uh, do a lot of damage behind your opponent's main base. <clears throat> so Might's actually retreating from mid. He's quite afraid of this uh, this pillar army. So there's still still reclaiming mid to be got, and now we have some navy on the bottom from Koi's kicks and we should see some navy up here as well and he has a lot of mass in the bank needs to get a, a t3 t3 engineer out get a t3 p gen pretty quick i think this cormorant was built to uh harass the acu or find him even in the water we also have some navy on both sides and from mites so, he should be able to take this this side. If we look at the T2 Maxes, Might's trying to catch up. He has some storages at the back. Storage is almost, it's basically another T2 Max. But uh, it's slightly less efficient. But you can think of it as very similar to making a T2 Max if you're trying to judge uh, the economy of two players. That transport is going to die, probably. Not quite, not quite. 
Now we have the loyalists arriving and making mincemeat of these pillars and the arties as they would. Loyalists do very well versus pillars. Pillars don't have very much damage. Loyalists are much faster, similar range, maybe slightly more range, and uh, a lot more damage. We have a 2 1 drop here. Well, a T2 transport with T T1 units, and there's four mexes here, a quarter of the way done, a quarter of the way to T2, and they're all dead. That's a very, very nice drop. You will see people make a, make a factory and some units here to defend against drops, some arities and stuff. We have another drop coming from the island. We have a CN air factory to make scouts and stuff, and a land factory. And this is actually engineers that are dropping. T2 gunships trying to clear up the mess. And this T2 transport has dropped some engineers. I'm not sure what the plan is for them. Over on the island, this drop just failed for for Koiskiks. It was only just a T1 drop, some engineers. We have T2 navy. We have just a bit of a standoff in mid. Not much happening. There is a lot of reclaim and nobody's, nobody's grabbing it right now. Well, Koiskiks has some engineers nearby. Just needs to move them up and... Uh, take that juicy mass. You can see there's quite a lot here. Just T2 Rex and T1 Rex. The frigates are moving in on this factory which is going straight to a support factory. So what you have to do, you gotta make some torp defense. You also have to retreat the engineers away. But he has no other navy so there's nothing you can really do versus the frigates except maybe Kill them with some torp bombers. A lot of Medusa stunning a lot of pillars. And more mass accumulates to be fought over. Let's see the, the army here. We have seven bricks. They're quite far back and the six loyalists. So the army is not really collected for mites right now. And Koiskix is on the move. He has got a radar up. And he has four Percivals. This guy way out of the fight. So he has to be careful here. He can't see what's coming and there's just more and more units pouring through. So this may be a very, very bad fight now that the bricks are here. And you also see Mites has moved to T2. Yes, the bricks come in and win the fight after it looked pretty good. It was looking quite good for for Koi's kicks and then the bricks arrived. Over here we have a cruiser, we have a Destro. It's gonna make quick work. Short work of the Cybern frigates. Looking at the base as well, this support factory is so low now, he did manage to get the Destro out. So if you wanna block a factory, you can ground fire here and uh, with frigates and it's very effective this support factory is so low now the bricks continue pushing through mid but now they've met with some Percy's and Percy's are so much better than bricks Percy versus brick is just not even a contest Percy wins every time and we have the T3 P gen up. I'm sure Mites has his. He has two now. And the support factories coming. And we have T3 air. We have a strap armor. Ooh, we have one done and we have one constructed. Or constructing. No stealth in this guy. He doesn't have the power to afford that. I, I'm not sure exactly how much it costs. Ooh, nice use of T2 subs here from Mites versus the UEF to uh, take out the cruiser and also it's very effective versus the destroyers strap bomber has one kill here goes 
Oh, it's this one. Another Max goes down. And you can see he's gonna... Well, he's being very conservative with his bomber. Wants to keep it alive and use it in the future. There are only interceptors coming after him. Another big fight. And actually, there's so many more bricks here. That this looks very bad. And you can see Mites is focus firing each brick to make sure they die as fast as possible and also if he loses vision his bricks will f continue moving and hunt these guys down but you can see Percy's there are so few of them in comparison that uh, this was a very bad fight we have a huge amount of mass here thousands and thousands and thousands of mass and three more Percy's gonna get Stomped. We have gunships for Koiskix. But now he sends his interceptors in to try and save them. There's only a few ASF and they're just going to get destroyed in this cloud. And all the Inties die and so do all the ASF except this one now. Which, which is going to die. There it goes. And the gunships are going to get to work on the bricks. Another large band of Percival is coming not sure how this died perhaps hmm where did that strat go is this the same one this may be the same one we ha see it uh, taken out two mexes but now it turns and gets oh looks like it will eventually go down to these these inties. There are also ASF, so I'm expecting ASF to be sent after this guy. But uh, just a few inties took him out. It's a huge amount of mass you want to grab. And now the brick's dying to T2 Navy. So the T3 land is really very vulnerable at this stage. Have some. Ballsy T2 transports, that's not... He's desperately trying to get this mass, but there's a lot of bricks, there's a lot of Percy's coming, and there's three Destros just laying down so much fire. See these bricks getting destroyed. And Koiskix needs to do similar to... to what Mites has been doing, and try and drop mid, because there is just... It's just the most important part of the map by far in the game right now. Destros did some damage, but there's still build power on this island, so it can be retaken. You can see a lot of dead frigates here. And that, ooh, look at that. 25 kills on this Destro, 20 on this guy. So we see a lot of frigate kills, and now we have the subs and the frigates, a lot of subs coming in to try and deal with these units. The Destros are going to go down. The, the cruisers are going to go down. And Koiskix lost his... He had one Cooper here. He has no shield boats. He has another Cooper coming. But uh, without shield boats and only one Cooper, it's going to die pretty quick to these sub killers. The Barracudas. It's also hard to torp the Barracudas because they have personal stealth. So, if Koiskix can grab this mass, he's going to be doing really well. But I don't see any transport from him. So it looks like he's just walking engineers here. It's probably not going to allow him to get the mass fast enough. And naval-wise, it looks bad on both sides actually for for Koiskix. Might's doing well. He has production here. We can see the Spore Factory. We have only, well, oh, we have three Destros and significant number of frigates, so that's a lot better than this one cruiser and three Destros. Now we have a fourth one here. The island does get finished off, but uh, he's going to have to invest APM to drop there. On, the t on this side, we have a lot of Barracudas. A lot of Barracudas. And uh, and a few frigates as well in support, so 
certainly superior to what Koizkix has. And Mainz has really taken the lead now. Just, I think, uh, ooh, we have some nice T3 mexes. So, although there have been some lost fights from, from Mites, his macro has been better, and he's just generally been more, more efficient. So, Mites, well, Koizkix needs the mass very badly, and, uh, he also needs to try and save his navy somehow. Now we have, ooh, we have a lot of coopers now, but still no shield boat, which is a criminal mistake, unfortunately. And a lot of these coopers are actually out of range, so they're getting taken out one by one. You can see how insane their torp defense is. I mean, he's barely taking damage. Like it doesn't have much HP. And then you combine this with uh, with a shield boat, and you just have the greatest anti torp, anti sub boat combination in the game by a mile. Naval production is going to die. Might's going to retake the island, and it's looking better and better for Might's. But still, he, he has some threat here. There's a lot of Percivals building up, and Koizkix is still sucking up this mass. He has a lot of mass in the bank now. So it's time to make sure you stay even on T3 maxes and make sure you have enough power to keep building and spending this mass. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Oh, seven, eight. We have at least eight T3 Maxes. And Koiskix has only three. So he is upgrading several now at once. Needs to be using this mass. I think a T3 Navy could be an option. I mean, if he gets some... Or just uh, increasing his naval build power. I think T3 Navy would be good for the UEF here. Barracudas or battle cruisers <laughs> are going to easily deal with any of these frigates and destroyers, and then you just need the the shield boats and the few cruisers to protect you from the air. Oh, we have an air fight coming, and Mites has far more ASF. Koiskix is not micring; he only has a patrol order. Meanwhile, Mites just. Well, Might just cleans that up. And the advantages are piling up for Mites. And we have a Megalith coming for Mites now. And Megalith is a great option for Cybern versus the Perseys. I mean, the bricks are just no match. So Megalith with its wonderful range is going to help a lot. Now Bricks aided with some shields certainly a lot better than uh, just Bricks versus Percy's. And does Koizkix know what he's... Well he does have vision. He has a nice air scout or a spy plane above. Some of these Bricks are a bit too far behind and it looks like this may be a mass donation. The fight is going to be pretty even, but an even fight is no good to no good to you in this scenario because all the mass is left on your opponent's doorstep. So maybe he needs to focus down. He could kill the HQ quite quickly. Could kill T3 P gens. Certainly the Omni could be killed, and he is going after T3 P gen. Oh, it act the T3 P gen takes out two support factories and the other pgen will likely go down i think no no it won't we also have whalers out now to defend the push and over here the salems make landfall 
and they're killing it. Max is all over the place. Koizik's now reacting, building some T1 factories, he's probably going to make some arties to go take out the Salem. Salems are so slow on land that they just die to any sort of land presence. Arties, labs, I mean T3 land no doubt just to annihilate Salems once they're on land. You can also just run behind the Salems and they can't shoot you. The T3 mix continues. T3 mix war. And there is no flak, no para shields. So the whalers are going to do massive damage. So I have some torpedoes trying to take out the navy that looks to uh, bombard the base of Koizkix, but it should be cleaned up by all these ASF mites with firm control of air. Koizkix, you can see the reclaim. 100,000 reclaim. Only 40,000 for mites. But uh, that's going to change fast once mites gathers up all this. There's pro I, I wonder how much master is here. It's hard to just judge by eye. But each T3 wreck is about 1k, so... It must be close to 40k mass. Maybe 30. Now we have a T2 naval fight. Then goes to Salem. That was a strange place for that guy to be. But we have... Only 3 destroyers here. And we have 2 subs, 3 destroyers, and many frigates. And these whalers are absolutely... wrecking these uh these poor Percy's they're gonna retreat to the water and when they retreat to the water they're gonna get torped by these destros and subs There's no good place to hide the Salems are still alive they are surely gonna die soon to these arties but you can see these were these were all t2 mexes that went down here 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 all T2 maxes. So big losses there. And now the torps going to work. And the torpedo bombers torping the uh, the Percy's in the water. Finally the Destros go down but they did a lot of damage. And Might's definitely in the ascendancy this this reclaim. Doing him a huge favor. And air control, naval control of one side, and the other side, navy, is pretty good for him. And with the torps, going to be even better. Megalith is on the way. So let's see what happens as we move on. It looks it looks bad for Koizkix. But he still has some chances. He has gone T3 Navy. Battle cruiser on the way. He needs to build shield boats. If there's one thing he needs to come away with this from, it's build shield boats. Now we have some anti airs up. Now you don't really want to build the T3 mobile anti air versus gunships generate. Flak and para shields is more useful, but he has dealt with them. Mites didn't uh, focus fire these quick enough. So they take them out. And now once you're going T3 you want to here with the navy you want to sort of save your navy and then once you get the battle cruiser out make sure that's doing all the work for you and you just sort of support it. And don't lose your navy before the battle cruiser is here to make the difference. So he is retreating to his BC, and this BC is going to just mop the floor with a lot of this stuff. He still has enough... He has stuff. torp boats, he has only one cruiser, however. What he definitely needs is uh, more cruisers, and of course, as I keep saying, the shield boats. And I think we also need more mass extractors. Let's see the generated mass, 600 
and 17 for mites. And he has a, a nuke defense as well. Just to be safe, we have the Megalith on the march. Megalith is so good. Such a good unit. See, massive range. Has a lot of AoE, a lot of DPS. Very fast projectile, so you can't dodge it or anything. Might's losing a lot of his air for not much reason. It is very difficult to <laughs> micro manage all of these different fights at once. Now, this battle cruiser is taking a lot of damage, but it looks like it will survive. Bricks trying to make their way to the beach, but uh, that's not really going to work. They're going to get killed by the torpedo boats. They actually have two battle cruisers, and this yeah, this navy is demolished. Oh, in fact. Mites has moved to T3 Navy as well. He's make he has a battleship out. <coughs> the cruiser is sniped by the torp torp bombers, and the megalith's pushing on. Needs to keep his units in support here. Needs to be careful. And that's a bit of a fail of micro there. He's not. You can uh, back up with the crab. It can walk backwards and continue shooting forward. But uh, he's just running away right now with the megalith. Because the Percy's are coming. And Percy's will demolish a megalith. If you're not watching carefully. Percy's will kill you. And we have a bug planned. Bug obviously very very good but he's lost all of his ASF I think I'm not sure where but uh, his ASF have been killed I only have 15 now so with a f with air control uh, let's see what Koisgix has in terms of air only 10 I think he's losing some to these cruisers and stuff in the in the bay the BCs push on one of them is very, very low. And it is sniped. Nice move from Mites to finish off the low one. Still, no cruisers here. A shield boat. Oh, they're getting stuck in the engineers here. That's... That's really bad. Oh my god, he has 10 here. Oh, and I've been saying, please build shield boats. He has 10 shield boats. And they're trapped in the factory, stuck on that those engineers. You see the engineers right there. Holy fuck! He has ten shield bolts there. Megalith pushes back again. Now that the Percy's have retreated, trying to do as much damage as he can. Something is assisting this. A factory. Okay. Strange. So this factory is just. Oh, all these factories are just idle because of a missed order, I think. Because the uh, Megalith is a factory, so I guess it completely fucks up the orders if you assist with a factory. Two, three, four battleships now, but there's no other units, so... There's only some frigates. You want to not have only battleships. So they will get surrounded, closed in on. They have to be able to stand at range and bombard and do their damage so you need frigates and destroyers the megalith is going to get destroyed by these Percy's look at the you can see how fast he goes down and the bricks were not in position there and that's it's a big deal for Koiskix he has 30k mass just on his doorstep now and he has a nuke almost complete. It's about 80% of the way. He does see that there's a nuke, a nuke defense. There's no shield around it. No shield on this, on this SMD. And that's uh, that's a problem. Could easily be killed. Can't really be killed from this side thanks to all the cruisers. Cruisers give 
great intel as well as long range uh, anti air. So it's difficult to get past, especially as a UEF, you don't have those stealth strats. But uh, on this side, certainly could get past and get a snipe in on the SMD. He has seen it. He definitely needs an Omni. Oh, the bug is done. I didn't even see it complete, and now it's over above Koiskik's head. And it's going to take out the nuke launcher just as it loads. And now the ACU is also going to go down. The bug finishes the game. Damn. Just as the nuke lo loaded. So, yeah, the bug came in from the top, as I was saying, Koiskix couldn't really attack from here with the... Couldn't snipe the SMD from there, well... Koiskix could use all that cover to bring his Soul Ripper right to the base of Koiskix and take out him and the nuke in the reverse order. So, well played from Mites. The Koiskix had some chances here, he had so much reclaim, so much reclaim, so... But Might's just a uh, superior play in general. Superior macro play, certainly. Better ecoing and stuff. And uh, better use of that eco. So, well played, both players. Thanks for watching. See you next time.